welcome to Luke 418 Radio. You're listening to The Dove. I am your host, Kenneth Ramsby. I would like to welcome each and every one of you. I hope your life is enhanced by the word of God we share here on The Dove. Come with me as we receive inspiration to our hearts for life. Hello, Dove Show listeners. For today's show, we are going to talk about blessings, the blessings that we get from God and the coverage we have from sin. Oh, yeah. I would like to begin today's show by reading from the book of Romans, chapter 7, verses 14 through 15. And the word of God reads, We know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do, for what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate, I do. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Heavenly Father, most gracious God, most perfect God, our Abba on high, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord of peace. We thank you for all things and for being the God that you are. I pray right now, Lord, for an increased anointing and a greater grace to be placed upon me. I ask, Lord, that you fill us now with your Holy Spirit to guide our minds, our will, our intellect, our emotions, and our bodies each day. Form us, Father, as you see fit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let us take a look today at sin. We're going to look at overcoming sin. We're going to look at a little history of it and how it came to be and how it is in our lives and how to be covered. The word sin is mentioned 448 times across 389 verses of the Bible. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 9, verse 7, we see that sin is rebellion against God. Remember this and never forget how you arose the anger of the Lord, the word says. Your God in the wilderness, from the day you left Egypt until you arrived here, you have been rebellious against the Lord, Deuteronomy 9, 7. And in James 4, 17, sin is whoever knows what is good but doesn't do it. Now, how many times have we knew to do the right thing but did the opposite? You know, like being told to go home at a certain time when we were children, but listen to our friends telling us not to go yet or to do something we shouldn't do in the first place or by going someplace where we were told not to go or be with a person we were told not to be around and did it anyway. And, you know, most of the time when we being disobedient, we ended up in some sort of trouble. We knew what good to do, but did not do it. That is sin. First John 3, 4 states that sin is lawlessness, you know, chaos, disorder, unruliness. Lawlessness refers to a state or condition characterized by the lack of adherence to laws, rules, or established regulations stated by God for us Christians. When we are in lawlessness situations, we act without regard for God's laws and engage in activities that are unlawful, disruptive, and harmful. Being lawless is a sin, a violation of God's moral law. Lawlessness involves actions that defy God's moral 
and ethical commandments. You know, those such as lying, stealing, committing adultery, being dishonest, not forgiving, not loving one another's neighbor as oneself, or engaging in any other behaviors considered morally wrong according to the word of God. Looking back at how sin began, we read in Isaiah 14, 12 through 15, that back in heaven, sin originated with Lucifer. Back in heaven when he attempted to rise above the Lord our God. Isaiah 14, 12 through 15 reads, How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will rise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the Mount of Assembly. On the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon, I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High God. Mm -hmm. But you are brought down to the realm of the dead, to the depths of the pit. You know how there are inventors, you know, that make a product. You know, this is good, good, good right here. You know how, you know, when people go inventing stuff and, and they have to get a patent, right, as the original developer of it. What I just read, we were talking about Satan being the originator in Isaiah 14. Satan owns the patent for sin. He's the original developer of it. Think about it. Now, Adam and Eve, they could be looked on as an investor, you know. <laughs> they, they got a franchise of sin. When they disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden in, in Genesis 3. Genesis 4, 7 says, if you don't do well, sin is at the door. If you don't do your best or give your best to God, sin is at the door. God didn't say Cain sin, but that offering to God our second best reveals there's something wrong in the heart. He wasn't punished for this offering, but that thing in his heart that caused him to murder Abel was revealed in this offering. Now, we have a payment for sin in Exodus 29, 36, a bullock for a sin offering for atonement. God put in place that sins must be paid for, atoned for. So the sin offering was established. For sin to be forgiven, atonement must be made. Here we see a foreshadowing of the cross with the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. In Romans 5.12, it tells us that sin is hereditary and ambiguous across humankind. As Romans 5.12 reads this, Therefore, just as sin entered into the world through one man and death through sin, and in this way death came to all people because all sin. We can say that sin is a stalker. Glorious and trapping if we look at what God told Cain in Genesis 4 7. Now, Genesis 4 7 reads this If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? Now, God was talking to Cain, but if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Oh, my friends, we must all rule over sin. We know that there is only one way to be rid of sin, only one way to be cleansed of sin, only one way we can be purified of sin, and that is to be nullified, and that is by God's forgiveness and mercy and the blood of Jesus Christ that he shed on Calvary. It is nothing but the blood that can wash away our sins. It is the blood that Jesus shed for you and me.
that gives us strength each day. It is the blood that Jesus shed that can dry all our tears. It is the blood that Jesus shed that we can have to cleanse us. And even though it was shed way back on Calvary in AD 33, almost 2,000 years ago, that blood had power and will never, never, ever lose it. It will never, ever, ever lose its power. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That blood of Jesus cleanses us from the wages that we earn from our sin. But praise be to God for his mercy and his saving grace for the washing of sin by his blood. Mm -hmm. Now, sin consequences we can see in 1 Corinthians 15, 56. That sting of sin is death. When you think that sin is trivial, not that important, you know, that little lie you told or whatever, next time you go to a funeral service, realize that it was because of sin that we lost paradise. It was because of grace we gained heaven. Oh, hallelujah. There's a guilt associated with sins as listed in Psalms 51.3. My sin is ever before me, it says. God gave man a conscience. When someone sins, they feel guilty. Mm -hmm. That's why you see people getting mad. When you, when you tell somebody about their sin, you say, you know, you're a Christian and you're supposed to be following the word of God, you know, but you know that those words you're using, you know, and the way that you're treating your family and the way that you're stealing and the way that you're out there doing things that you're not supposed to do, you're not supposed to do. And they get guilty and get mad at you. But see, don't take it like they're getting mad at you because when someone sins, they're going to feel guilty. That guilt becomes a weight. It's called condemnation. Romans 14, 23, for whosoever is not of faith is sin. Oh, you got to hear me, my friends, on this. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. If you can't do something in full confidence that is right, it is wrong. Anything that is questionable to you should be avoided like a plague. Let me give you an example. So I know this person and they like to go and play the lottery and play the little machines they have in places, you know, and all that stuff. Right. But when they go, they will say something like, I hope don't nobody see me. You know, I don't want nobody to see me in here playing the games, you know, and buying these tickets and such. You know, it may not be one thing wrong with you enjoying a game. There's games that have been had since the beginning of the time. But when you, when you can't do something in full confidence that is right, it is wrong. When you being feeling guilty and you are feeling condemnation because you're doing something, it's a sin. If you can't do it with faith that God will bless it, <laughs> to you, <laughs> it's going to be sin. Mm -hmm. We have inherited sin, which was passed on to us as a passed on depravity. We are sinners, not because we sin. Rather, we sin because we are sinners. Psalms 51.5 states, Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. This original sin was passed down through Adam and Eve to all their descendants, which includes all of humanity. As a result, all humans are considered to be born with a sinful nature. And this inherent sinfulness separates us from God. When we sin, we are separated from God. It is the reason why people have a natural inclination to sin and fall short of God's moral standards. Imputed sin is a result of Adam and Eve's original sin. All humans inherit a sinful nature or a predisposition to sin. Remember, Adam's sin is imputed or passed down to all of his descendants. This became the law with the law of Moses. 
Now, when this became with the law of Moses prior to the Ten Commandments, there was no imputed sin, only inherited sin. Romans 4.15 says, because the laws bring wrath and where there is no law, there is no transgression. And that answers that question that many have asked in the past. What about those who lived and died before Moses was given the law? You know, when we read 513, it says, then the law came to impute sin. To be sure, sin was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not charged against anyone's account where there is no law. So that answers the question of those born before Moses was given the law. There was no account. So those who sinned before the law was given were not charged with sin. Personal sin is that which is committed every single day by everybody from lying and murder due to our inherent Adamic sin nature. These are sins which are sins like lying, gossiping, acting selfish, coveting. Sins are considered grave offenses that sever the individual relationship with God if not repented and forgiven. Committing sin leads to spiritual death unless the sinner admits to God they were wrong, sincerely repents and asks for forgiveness through confession of their sin and then stop sinning. The omission of sin in James 4.17 says for a man to know to do right and not do it, to him it is sin. We normally think of sin's commission, committing a sin, you know, but there is a sin of omission, not doing what God told us to do. You know, when you listening to the Holy Spirit and you just ignore the Holy Spirit. Now you got, now I don't know. I would say that there is a lot of people, including myself, that heard God tell them to do something and they ain't do it. God told you, don't go over there with them boys because they ain't going to do nothing but get you in trouble. Then you went anyway, didn't you? God said, don't go out with them girls to that club because ain't going to nothing be, be trouble. But, but did you listen? No. You girls, y'all girl, your girls came over to me. We going to stop over your house right here. We going to have a couple of drinks and then we going to go to the club, you know, and we going to dance and stuff and things and see the boys. Mm -hmm. And you went anyway. And you heard God say, don't go with them. Ain't nothing but trouble. But you went anyway. We all have things like that in our life. You know, sin can dominate our life. But remember, whoever commits sin is a servant of sin. When we sin, sin will be our master. The more you give into sin, the harder it will be to defeat that sin. Satan has stitches. He likes to put things onto your flesh that are hard to remove. Oh, that's a good one, ain't it? Satan has stitches. <laughs> he likes to stitch things in your flesh <laughs> that's hard to get out. Self-deception in 1 John 1, 8 says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Now, how many people that you know of that were asked if they sin, they're going to say, no, I don't sin. <laughs> It is amazing, my friends, that people say, they will say this on top of that. I ain't never seen. And you ask them, have you ever stole anything? Even a, a pencil, you know, consciously took it and, and, and wasn't going to bring it back because you needed it and didn't ask for it. Have you ever done that? Have you ever told a lie in your whole life? These questions that I ask are simple, but they still are in the Ten Commandments still in, in line. A sin is a sin, my friend. The more you give into sin, the harder it is to defeat it, I tell you. If we say we have no sin, you know, all Every time we say it, we just, <laughs> you only fooling yourself. You ain't fooling nobody else. Because somebody asks you, have you ever lied to your life, and in your life, and you say, no, I ain't never lied in my life. They look at you like, yeah, right. You just sit up there, you just deceiving yourself, and then lying on top of the lies you already told. 
Anyone who thinks they are so righteous and holy that they are without sin, I tell you, my friends, they are deceived. We need to realize just because we didn't murder someone today or commit adultery or rob a bank doesn't mean that we were sinless. God checks our attitudes, our thoughts, our words throughout the day. He knows our motives for everything we do. Yeah, he is reading your mind when you have those wicked thoughts about doing something or looking at something or thinking about something that you shouldn't. Sin's revelation in Numbers 32, 23, be sure your sin will find you out. (laughs) <laughs> you may seemingly get away with the sin. Yeah, but in time, all sin will be revealed. You know, you got to keep that in your hip pocket as you go about your day. All sin will be revealed. That's the word of God. Oh, you got to think about what you're going to do when you face the music with God and all them thoughts you had and all the sins you had. After you listen, you sit up there and listen to the preacher. You sit up there and read the Bible and read all the things that God said were sin. You ignored them and did it anyway. And then you think you're going to get away with it. Nope. Just because someone on a human being on this earth didn't see you. That don't mean that they're going to be revealed and be shown at judgment. Jesus said those things done secretly will be revealed openly. Those things in the dark revealed in the light. How many times have you heard that in your life? Everything you do in the dark going to come to light. And it sure does. And I'm going to tell you, if it doesn't come to the light in this life, oh, I guarantee you, it's going to come to light in the next life for sure. You know how I know? Because God's word says so. Sin hardens the heart. Hebrew 3.13 now says it hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. That's how our heart gets hardened. This is an amazing verse. The more you sin, check it out. The more you sin, the heart gets harder. You become less sensitive, less compassionate, more worldly, and more fleshly, I'll say. Sin begets more sin. You know, the devil made me do it is what some people are uh, come up with, you know. And sometimes I tell you, the devil had a hand in it, you know. When you see there was a murderer that there's a murder that happened, and the murderer said that the devil made him do it. There's a guy that walks into a store with a hatchet and just start hatching people and said the devil made him do it. When lust conceives, it brings forth sin. Sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Here's an amazing statement. We get ourselves into more sin than the devil does. We're going to blame the devil for everything some people do. It is when we give into our fleshly lusts that sin is produced in our lives. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the devil going to try to stitch sin to you, but that don't mean you can't take, you know, one of those uh, little tools that you pull out thread with and unstitch it. When we are transformed as a new creature in Christ, we will have wars of a carnal nature against our new man in Christ, as read in Galatians 5. Now, we're talking about that transformation that happens when you stop sinning and you finally give your life to Christ. We will have wars against ourselves. We're going to have wars against our new man. In Galatians 5, we read, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Oh, that is so true. You know, it also says, For flesh desires what is contrary to Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want, but if you are led by the Spirit, 
you are not under the law. Ain't that something? You got to be led by the Spirit. And the only way to get led by the Spirit is for the mercy of God to come upon you and give you his Holy Spirit and let it grow and flourish within you. And you can't do it if you're still out there sinning, even this if it's watching porn, having sinful thoughts every time a woman or a man walk by, oh, you got to stop, my friends. All that restricts your spirit from being fully developed and guiding and leading you in the path of righteousness. Remember, the word of God says, be holy because he is holy. You can't be holy if you're always lusting after someone, looking at, checking out that girl that worked to wear that little short skirt and all that, and the one that walk in there with all breastlessness hanging out and things like that. You can't be holy if you just wait, can't wait to her to walk in so you can see what she got on today, you know, or see what he got on today, or see what he smells like today. Mm, he always smell good when he come to work. Mm, you know, doing things like that. You know what I'm talking about? Apostle Paul's explanation to the Romans in Romans 7 is clear for how we must look at workings of sin, for he says this, so I find this law at work. Oh boy, here we go. Paul be on it. So then I find in my mind, am a slave to God's law. So in our minds, we are slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature, a slave to the law of sin. Oh, we got a battle going, my friends. Paul also says, I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, my friends, I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature, a slave to the law of sin. Oh, Paul got it so right, my friends. And this is this, this the part that really gets me, you know, although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. I tell you, we all got it. It's all the same. It's how you make that first step in not sinning and giving your life to Christ and depending on the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you in not doing it. You can't do it on your own. In John 3, the Bible says this. It says that we must be born again and that as we must be born again of what? Water and spirit, right? Along with this in Romans 14, 15, Jesus says, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. We must be individually born again. For when we are, in John 1, 3, 9, it says this, No one who is born of God will continue to sin. So I hope you heard that loud and clear. No one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in them. They cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. <laughs> what you talking about when you born of God, when you born again, oh, I'll tell you all that sin stuff goes out the window. Yeah, you're going to be tempted and you're going to have things, but, you know, you got that whole armor, too. You got that whole armor. You got the Holy Spirit. Oh, and you can put up the fight. And it is, I tell you, you talking about putting up a fight for your life? This fighting against sin is a fight for not only your life here on earth, but your eternal life as well. Because, see, we can see by this passage who God says seed is in them for those that do not keep sinning and as they have the seed of God in them. So if you got the seed of God, you ain't sinning. 
If you don't have the seed of God, you are out there sinning. It's that simple. It's only two ways about it. If you're still sinning, you ain't got it in you. And that's from the word of God. Through God's continual wisdom, we see the principle of imputation as God's impute the sins of those are believers to Christ as written in John 1, 2, 2. And it states, he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. And in turn, imputes the righteousness of Christ to be born again as believers, as we read in 2 Corinthians 5, 21. It says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. You can't have it without Jesus. No matter what the pundits tell you, no matter what these famous people tell you, there's all, there's all kinds of ways to God. Oh, not according to the Holy Bible, it ain't. It's only one way. It's only one way we get to see God and see him in righteousness. And that is through Jesus Christ. It says, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. You call on the name of God and you are faithful and true and listening and taking that first step. God going to carry you through. 2 Timothy 2.19 says, doable by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's how we get there. That's how we get to be holy because he is holy. That's how we get righteousness. It ain't because our righteousness. It is because of the righteousness in which God imparts through us. It is by us choosing to stop living in sin and being renewed through calling on the name of Jesus Christ and the transformation by the Holy Spirit that saves us. We must confess by faith and live by 1 John 1, 9, which reads if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's how you get through the righteousness of God. It ain't because of all righteousness, that's for sure. You know, we as humans are triply condemned by three counts. Three counts charges inherited sin, imputed sin, and personal sin. The only penalty that we have for this trio, oh, we got to pay if we don't get it clean, is death. Both physical and eternal death. We need to raise our hands up and praise God. As inherited sin, imputed sin, and personal sin were all crucified on the cross of Jesus, and by born again faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So says Ephesians 1, 7. As I close, let us have protection against sin, my friends. Oh, let Psalms 119.11 reign. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. God has given us his word to a place in our heart that when we are tempted to sin, we can rely on God's word to help us sustain. Hallelujah. We here at Luke 418 Church invite you to join us by logging in to www.luke418church.org. Click on the online membership link at the top of the page. Fill out your information along with your membership request and you'll be contacted. To hear the top 40 songs in spirit, feel gospel music 24-7-365, and the most wonderful broadcast of Christian music and Christian podcasts. They all share the word of God, I'll tell you. And you can download the Luke 418 Radio Network app from your app store. Or you can go on to www.luke418radio.com. Luke418radio.com is the leading cutting edge in Christian radio on the internet. I want to thank you as I am blessed that you have joined us today. Join me again, my friends, next week as we look at how to live right 
according to God's word and keep Christ as head of our lives. May the Lord bless you and keep you and your family. Until next time, this is your host, Kenneth Ramsby. May peace be with you. You've been listening to The Dove on Luke 418 Radio. Join us next week as we share God's word. Download the Luke 418 Radio app from your app store. Be sure to tune in daily to Luke418Radio.com. Be sure to share the podcast on your favorite social media channel. 